What tools do you actually need to inspect a boat? Well, that depends on how deeply you want to understand a boat's construction, its condition, and what your relationship is with that boat. Inspecting any boat can be done with the minimum of tools and a few basic skills. However, the deeper an understanding you wish to have of the boat's construction and condition, the more tools and skills you're going to need. Hello, I'm David Pestridge of White Hat Marine Surveying, located in the beautiful county of Devon here in the United Kingdom. My mission is to help people understand boats better. Now, if you're looking to buy a boat and are sifting through the numerous boats on offer at your local marinas, all you really need is a notepad, a pencil, a good torch, a straight edge and a camera. And you probably already have all of these things at home and need not spend any money on extra tools to start taking notes and making observations to weed out the unsuitable boats on offer. Once you find the right one to buy, you can then instruct a marine surveyor to survey the boat for you. By contrast, if you're already a boat owner, you probably have a modest toolkit on board, which should cover all of your boat's routine maintenance tasks and be suitably equipped for any unexpected tasks. This toolkit is likely to be quite personalised to the style and age of your boat and to your technical ability. By contrast, a small craft marine surveyor needs a well-equipped toolbox with the right tools to cater for the wide range of vessels which make up his or her work. The choice of tools will vary according to the type of boats he or she specialises in and those that are predominant in their local area. And this all needs to be stowed in a small enough package that it can be carried a reasonable distance from the car to the vessel. I started surveying in 2008 and whilst my toolbox has grown in capability, it has stayed largely within the same space envelope of a toolbox, a small rucksack and a second storage box. And along with showing you the equipment I take on every survey, I've put together a really useful resource to help you get equipped for small craft surveying, which I'll signpost you to later on. So then, let's get down to business. I've separated my toolbox out into five key elements, and I've added chapters to this video to help you refine any sections which you wish to revisit and focus on. Let's start by looking at the essential items you'll need on any survey. And this is probably the largest section of my toolbox and contains a whole host of everyday basics such as a decent torch, work lamp, camera, plumb lines, magnets, chalk, spray paint and batteries to name but a few. The range of basics you need is very much dependent on the type of work you generally do. A decent torch has to be one of the most important non-tool bits of kit in your toolbox. The deep recesses of most boats tend not to have any lighting and you will need a reliable source of light that works way better than your smartphone's built-in light. I've been a fan of maglite torches since my time in the military, and I value their rugged construction and bright light, especially as they're now all LEDs. And torches are very much a personal choice. Mine is a 2C cell torch with a knurled grip, which I find works best for me when my hands are either cold, wet, or both. To go with a torch is a standalone work lamp, which can provide more area lighting when I'm working underneath vessels or in larger unlit spaces. My Ryobi work lamp runs on the Ryobi OnePlus 18 volt rechargeable lithium ion batteries, which also power a wide range of other tools. It's got a useful hook on a base so you can hang it off beams or use a lanyard. And I found the runtime to be four or five hours on one charge, which is more than enough on most jobs. A decent ladder is an essential piece of kit, which should always be in your car. Most good brokers would have left a ladder attached to the vessel to facilitate buyer viewings, but if you're doing insurance work or need to have a close look at the top sides of a deep draft yacht, you'll need a ladder. I've had my 3.2 meter 11 rung telescopic ladder for over a decade now, and it's been perfect for my work. As always, there are plenty of cheap options out there aimed at the occasional home DIY market, but if you want something sturdy that won't give you the wobbles when you're three meters off the ground, then buy a decent ladder, such as the Tele Steps. One of the big investment pieces you'll need quite early on is a decent camera to record your findings. You may already have a good DSLR camera, or be happy to use your phone, as most modern phones do have very capable cameras. I prefer having a dedicated camera and keeping my phone as an emergency backup should the battery die. I've been using Olympus Tough cameras since I started surveying. This was my first one, which served me really well and I'm now on my second one, the uprated Olympus Tough TG5. I wear it around my neck on a lanyard so I can pull it out and take a picture with one hand and I'm not, I'm not worried about dropping it into the build as it's on the lanyard and it's waterproof and shockproof. The picture quality at 12 megapixels is excellent and it can add GPS location data if that's needed in any insurance work you do. Of course, with a lot of my kit being battery powered, I always carry a ready supply of batteries in the toolbox. In my case, that means AAA, AA, C and 9 volt batteries for my various tools. And I've always preferred using Duracell Ultra batteries. Now let's have a look at the wide range of general tools which get used on most, if not all, of my surveys. And this includes several measuring devices, such as flexible steel and tape measures for measuring the length, beam and draft of the hull. I use a 30 meter tape measure for doing the length of a vessel and I have an 8 meter steel tape measure for taking draft and beam measurements. 
when it comes to measuring prop shafts, rudder stocks, anchor chain, standing rigging, I found a vernier gauge to be ideal. It's a surprisingly accurate device once you've mastered the skill of reading the scale and has both metric and imperial measurements on it, which makes it perfect for working on older boats. I also have a small micrometer, which gets used occasionally for taking specific measurements on very small items. A pit depth measuring tool is essential for assessing pitting on a steel hull such as a barge or a narrowboat. I've been using a Mitutoyo dial depth gauge since 2013, and I really like the easy to read dial and the shape, which fits nicely in the hand when crawling around underneath old narrowboats and barges. As for hammers, I carry three in my toolbox. A lightweight FRB hammer for percussion testing FRB hulls, also known as the toffee hammer, and a heavyweight hammer for barges and narrowboats. And a fi finally, a soft face hammer for hitting everything else where I don't want to leave a mark. Now every survey will have their preferred style and brand of scrapers. I've found the Barco silicon carbide scrapers to be very effective at clearing old anti-fouling away from FRP hulls. It has a good grip and the blade can be removed and re-honed on a traditional whetstone. For light duties, clearing slime or marine growth from a hull for thickness checks, I use a Stanley Dynagrip filling knife, which has just the right amount of flexibility in the blade and a comfortable grip for prying into corners, getting behind seacocks and a multitude of other uses. A useful tip I want to share with you is to be sure you round off the corners of your general purpose scraper to prevent it from digging in and leaving marks where it shouldn't. A normal file will do this or find an outweigh piece of concrete and use that to round the corners off. A very useful tool for the small craft surveyor is a battery voltage drop tester. This is used to check the voltage of a battery before and after a high resistance load is applied to gain an understanding of the battery's condition. And this is a simple to use, robust piece of equipment which gives confidence in the state of the batteries. A set of spanners is essential to get the battery clamps undone so the batteries can be tested individually. My set of reversible Barco spanners has 12 sizes of spanner from 8 to 19 millimeters, all with reversible ratchet heads and comes in a great little storage bag, perfect for the car as well as the toolbox. Another really useful tool is a decent multimeter, which I use to check for continuity between anodes and prop shafts and other elements of the bonding system. There are plenty of cheap multimeters on the market, some obviously better than others, but I found this is one area where quality is worth paying for. I've had my fluke multimeter since before I took up marine surveying and it has never let me down. Many, many surveyors shy away from anything other than the most basic of engine checks as part of their survey routine. I always try and find out as much as I can from an engine, especially if I'm unable to start it during the survey. And testing the engine coolant is a quick and easy test which can tell you a lot about the condition of the engine and how good the servicing has been. Finding that the complex and expensive engines of your client's dream boat are filled with nothing more than plain water will greatly enhance your reputation, as coolant plays an important role in both protecting against frost, but an even greater role in corrosion protection, which, given the variety of metals present in any engine, is essential. Testing the concentration of coolant and the level of frost protection it provides in the engine is very useful data, and my Gunson 77105 tester is an ideal piece of kit for this test. Having a telescopic angled mirror is a really useful tool for looking at the reverse side of engine mounts, the top edge of rudders, the bottoms of keels, and for finding the serial numbers on engines, which are nearly always on the least accessible side of the engine. There are plenty to choose from, but I chose a Barco mirror as I've always rated their build quality. The last item on my general tools list is a quality jeweler's loop or eyeglass. Like most people as I age, my ability to focus on things very close up decreases. So I find a small magnifying glass that fits in my pocket to be really useful. My jeweler's loop has a 10 times magnification, a triplet lens and comes with a tough little leather case. It is most certainly not something I needed back in 2008. In this section we look at the specialist tools I have in my toolbox for surveying FRP hulls. And when it comes to doing a moisture meter on an FRP hull, I've been using a Tramix Skipper Plus moisture meter since I started in 2008. This is a great entry level tool to get you going in this line of work. Its simplicity is its greatest strength and it makes a quick moisture survey very easy to undertake with one hand. It's also ideal for recording moisture levels in the deck alongside deck fittings. I added a sovereign moisture meter to my toolkit in 2012 which offers greater capability. I find them both equally useful as they do work in slightly different ways and each has their pros and cons. They seal in quite different price points though so you may prefer to start with the Tramex to see how you get on with that alone. As with any measurement tool, the results are just the first stage of the moisture survey. It's the interpretation which matters and adds value to what you do for your client. Interestingly, Tramix have recently launched an updated version of the Skipper Plus, which looks very promising and offers increased capability over the original version. I'll be looking to get my hands on one soon and we'll do a tool reveal video when I do, so keep an eye out for that on the channel. At the other end of the cost spectrum for equipping yourself to undertake FRP boat surveys is some humble litmus paper for testing osmotic blisters. 
I use a general purpose universal litmus paper, which gives a color based reading for all pHs from 1 to 14. And this gives a reassuring confirmation that the contents of a blister are indeed acidic. However, make sure you wear safety glasses when you pop osmotic blisters as the contents can be under quite high pressure and with a typical pH of 3, it's really going to sting your eyes if you get squirted. Getting equipped for ultrasonic measurement of metal holes requires a fairly substantial investment. There are broadly speaking two main choices of ultrasonic thickness meters for the aspiring steel surveyor, the Cygnus range or the Tritex range. I've been using my Cygnus 4 general purpose meter since 2013 and I've found it to be an excellent piece of kit. Its only real limitation for me has been reading the LCD display in bright sunlight. It gives consistent readings, sits easily in my left hand with my couple of bottle and scraper, leaving my right hand free to take the readings. And the reading also has a signal strength or confidence scale on the left which lets you know when you have a good reading. From what I've seen of the Tritex thickness meters that demonstration is given by John Charland over the years, they offer a similar capability to the Cygnus in a slightly different package and I believe are an equally popular choice among small steel craft surveyors. And I think it comes down to personal preference and whatever price deal you can get, including servicing and extra probe heads if you need them. I'll put a link to both companies in the description down below. To go with the meter, you'll need a supply of couplant. You can buy specialist ultrasonic couplant from your meter supplier, but I found general purpose medical ultrasound gel to work just fine. You can get it in five litre jugs, and if you add a pump dispenser, then you have an easy resupply method when you finish your survey to top up the small bottles of couplant that come with your thickness meter. Your thickness meter should also come with a small steel test piece, typically 10 to 15 millimeters thick, to check calibrate your meter before and after a thickness survey. I use the 3.5 MHz 30 millimeter probe, which is rated as good for 2 to 150 millimeters range. As mine came with a fairly chunky test piece, I decided to enhance its capability and bought a set of six thickness test blocks ranging from 1.5 to 20 mil. This gives me greater confidence in the meter's ability to read below 3 millimeters. I also have a small piece of 8mm aluminium plate, which I was given while surveying an OVNI yacht in France, which is my aluminium calibration block. Don't forget, you'll need to get your thickness meter recalibrated every 12 to 24 months by the manufacturer. And this will mean setting it away for a week or so and it will return with a calibration certificate, which is an important document should anyone challenge your findings. Sometimes in older iron and steel vessels, the condition of the outer plate is rough and it can be quite hard to get a good sample of readings as your probe needs a flat enough surface, both internally and externally, for the ultrasonic signal to reflect off. In these situations, it's appropriate to do a bit of linishing to grind a few spots using an angle grinder to help you get a flat enough surface. I use an angle grinder from the Ryobi One Plus range, which uses the same battery as my work lamp. Coupled with some general purpose grinding discs, it makes it quick and easy to get readings in areas of interest. Finally, there's always a packet of milliput two-part metal putty in my toolbox. When you're doing a metal hull survey in between tides, the milliput is an insurance policy in case you hold the hull with your hammer. You just mix it up in equal parts and stick it in the hole where it will set, hopefully preventing the vessel from sinking. It doesn't weigh much and I haven't had to use it yet, but it's very reassuring to know it's there in case I need it. And my survey's top tip for tidal surveys is keep an eye on the tide coming in. It always seems to come in much quicker than it went out. Like most small craft surveys, wooden boat surveys make up less than 10% of my workload. I've always enjoyed being commissioned to survey wooden boats as they are fascinating vessels, most of them have great stories, and are by and large, to my eyes, quite beautiful to look at. Of all the small craft survey disciplines though, wooden boat surveys are the most challenging, as every piece of wood and fastener is important to the overall strength of the hull. And as wood is not as homogeneous as steel or FRP, you need to check in much finer detail. The three tools most important to this type of survey are the lightweight hammer I mentioned earlier for percussion testing the wood, a small spike for probing any softwood and a moisture meter specifically for measuring moisture in wood. My spike is an old Stanley screwdriver with a small solid hard plastic handle and a tip that I've rounded off. It wants to be sharp enough to penetrate softwood but not so sharp that it marks sound wood or varnish. The hard plastic handle also acts as a mini hammer for tapping in hard to reach areas. I use an old cork to cover the end of my spike as catching it under your fingernail whilst rummaging around the toolbox is quite painful. The Protometer Mini General Purpose Wood Moisture Meter is a great little tool which gives a percentage moisture reading when the two metal spikes are pressed into the wood. Use it for probing along the bases of wooden bulkheads and other structural wood. It comes out of the toolbox during a lot of surveys as most FRP boats are built with wooden bulkheads glassed into the hull and the interior of almost all boats is typically built around a wooden frame attached to the hull. I mentioned a really great resource earlier which I think you will find useful. Using kit.co I've put together a kit list for each of the sections we've discussed here. In there you'll find a brief description of the product, why I like it, and what it adds to my surveying. 
And these are all tools that I use in my day-to-day -day marine surveying work and are based on my personal experience gained since I started surveying small crafts in 2008. Alongside each item, I put an Amazon link, which will take you to the Amazon store of your region. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you found it useful, then why not support the channel by buying me a beer using the link in the description down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time. <laughs> Hello, I'm David Petrus of White Hat Marine Surveying, located in the beautiful county of Devon here in the United Kingdom. My mission is to help people stop burping when they're doing YouTube videos. What tools do you actually need to inspect a boat? Well, that's not scrolling. And I use an old cork to cover the end of my spike, as catching it under your fingernail whilst rummaging around in your toolbox can be quite painful. The protimeter mini generous... The pr <laughs>